We went to our local St. Patrick's Day parade on Saturday. Oh, did you? And admittedly, we didn't go last year. I slept through it because, you know, I suck. I didn't realize. Apparently, uh, there's a a thing in central New Jersey where we have New Orleans-style string and brass bands. There were like six in this parade with like the spangly outfits and every band had a different theme. Like one were hobos and one were all butterflies and like sparkly, sparkly outfits and a guy in front whose only job was to dance. Well, that's to commemorate the hobo butterfly war. And banjos. And all who fell. And and then every single group that went by in the parade was throwing out candy. Like the kids had trick or treat bags. And I'm like, (laughs) this is like an Irish family friendly Mardi Gras. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm not mad at it. I, I don't, yeah, I, I'm, no, no, it's it's the Great Hobo Butterfly War that St. Patrick, uh... Because there was another group that was, like, in sparkly versions of Army and Navy uniforms. Yeah, exactly, because St. Patrick drove out the snakes, and then the butterflies rose to power, and... Th- They're you know, mummers. Yes, one of them was called a mummers group, yeah. Yeah. So I didn't know that was a thing in Central Jersey. It's never been in any St. Patrick's Day parade I've ever been in. But there were, like, six of them. And then everybody was throwing candy off everything. Like, literally, kids showed up with, like, trick-or-treat bags. And I was like, this is the cool... Like, why were parades like this when I was a kid? I know. You threw candy at me. Nobody threw candy at me. We didn't really the have... The really baseball team had a YouTube. t-shirt cannon. We didn't have parades like that in Charleston, though. So I, I, I talk about this every time St. Patrick's Day rolls around. Savannah. Huge Irish Catholic population in Savannah. And... When I lived down there, oh boy, we, we, well, we couldn't go to the parades either, because when you live in Savannah, everyone who is not in Savannah comes to Savannah, and if you live in Savannah, you get the fuck out. You hide. <laughs> you, cu- you leave, and you come back in a few days, and you survey the aftermath, and then you clean the up, and you move on with your life, because it's, it's sort of like a, a, mon- like a horde shows up. And devastates the town and then moves on. Here's how bad my excuse is for not going to the parade last year. The parade steps off half a block from my house. We walked there and it took us three minutes. The parade steps off at the fire department half a block from my front door. And yet still. I was just like, I'm not getting out of bed. All right. Today, like, no, my parents are disappointed in me. I have to go to the St. Patrick's Day parade. And it was good. It was a lot of fun. We got candy. Well, you know what's not good? Everything we're about to do. Yeah, everything we're about to do. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, and bring it back here for a little segment we like to call... What the fuck is wrong with you? And uh, we're going to start this week with... I know you believe in ghosts. I know you do. I don't. But I know you do. Which is why this particular story was just like... This is not the ghost busting I remember. I know we all... The ghost of Miracle is still with us. I know, I know everybody's been all mad about Ghostbusters lately, but this, this is not the reboot we wanted. Um, man caught trying to light neighbor's home on fire to get rid of ghost. Did he salt it first? Because otherwise it's not going to work. How do you salt the fire? Showing it. You salt the house. Whatever, whatever you're burning, you have to salt it first, because salt is the universal purifier. Otherwise, it's not going to work. You're just going to piss it off. Skip this. Skip this. Skip this. Anyway. Um, new video shows a California man pouring gallons of diesel on his neighbor's front porch. We're about to see it. Come on. Show us. Yeah, not you. Not You're not helpful. You're not helpful. This is not what I'm here for. This this is not what we were here Advertising. for. Advertising. There we go. Anyway, you can see the picture there. You get the fucking idea. You get the fucking... There he is. Um, new video shows a California man poured gallons of diesel on his neighbor's front porch. He told police he did it because he was trying to get rid of a ghost. 
Family security cameras captured the man pouring diesel and then trying to light the porch on fire, but the fire never fully ignites. A woman and her two young children were sleeping inside at the time. Family called the police and arrested the man. Um, the, home, the, the homeowner said he did. It said that he didn't have anything against us. He just thought he saw a ghost in our house. And to me, that's even scarier. There's a certain certain <clears throat> etiquette to ghost hunting. Part of that etiquette is before you burn the fucker down, you let the living people get out. <laughs> just making new ghosts. <laughs> That's right. You know, you're just making it worse then. Because there were ghosts. Now, now there are more ghosts. Also, you've murdered people. Yes. Oh, and by the way, uh, Kwong Pham 38 is uh, charged with arson and attempted murder. And that's an important thing to note, because even if you can't get the diesel to light, it still counts as arson. Yeah, you still tried. You tried. You gotta knock on the door and be like, excuse me, Sam you have to get out of here, Samantha Morton. Your porch is haunted. And then you light it on fire. The, the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my, just, all of the, just, you're, you're in your house, middle of the night. All of a sudden, a guy comes over and starts pouring stuff on your on your fucking front porch. No, I'm not mad at you. We just got to get rid of the ghost. See, and this, like, Dan travels for work every now and then. And this is the shit I fucking worry about. Because I'm not equipped to handle that situation. He is. You randomly worry about your neighbor attempting to burn your house down because to get rid of ghosts? Sure. <laughs> and I promise you, Dan Oddly specific. that exact scenario because Dan is... <clears throat> Fucker I've ever met, ever met, and I love him for it. He has a plan for everything. Me, I'm gonna be under the bed screaming or running around trying to collect my cats. Like, <laughs> I or no the cats, cats will be under the bed screaming. So you know, Simba's actually scared of under the beds. I've never known a cat to be scared of going under the beds, but like, Dotty darts under the bed, and then he like half slides under, and they fisticuff with his like ass hanging out because he won't go all the way under the bed how do you end up in the middle of the night with a can of diesel in your hand the light in the other and think i'm gonna burn down a house to get rid of ghosts and this is a good plan but just the porch just the porch. how but how do you is a porch ghost how do you end up going this is a good idea i'm happy with the with the thought process that led me here i feel like, good about this i watch a lot of supernatural like a lot. Like I've rewatched that whole run on Netflix at least twice. Bless your hearts. And yet, even if I were to do this, which I never have, hmm. I would salt it first because I'm not a moron. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving that the thing about here that's tripping you out is he didn't use salt. He didn't do his research. <laughs> When I thought my old condo was haunted and I had my friend come over to do some Wiccan shit, <laughs> he salted everything. And he didn't fuck around. He burned his own chest hair and wrote glyphs on the walls and shit. <laughs> I never had any more problems. That shit worked. But you need the salt. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I, I don't think you're kidding. And that's why it's funny. And it worked. I never had any more problems in that condo. You know, Tara, I can give you a special rock that will repel tigers. I promise you, a tiger will never come within 100 miles of you with the rock I can sell you. Yeah, what if I bring the rock to the zoo? Well, then they're going to have to get new tigers, and they'll sue you, so you shouldn't do that. I'm just trying to keep you out of legal jeopardy, you know? I don't have tiger problems. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, you know. Or either. You can think now about we just it. have the ghost of Miracle who tells our cats to clean their ears. <laughs> and that's fine. Ah, uh, okay. The next one is, oh boy. <laughs> I hate when the TSA has to look in my luggage. Well, no, they don't have to, but I hate when they look in my luggage. Because I never have anything interesting in my fucking luggage. I've checked my luggage a few times. It's just clothes. I try to keep all of my good shit out of my luggage when it goes through. 
I still kind of feel sorry for them because they have to see all the horrible stuff people put in their checked luggage. I have like a lot of makeup and grooming items when I travel. Like, that's that's kind of benign, Tara. We went overweight at one point because I had and we weighed at 10 pounds of just grooming items. <laughs> me, me, it doesn't happen, people. Me, I just I put what I just the mostly just clothes because I'm like, I don't want anyone to fuck with my suitcase. This is the opposite impulse. <clears throat> Florida man had non-functioning grenade launcher at Lee Valley International Airport. That's Lehigh. an... Uh, Lee, uh, Lee, what? Lehigh. Lehigh Valley. My, my bad. <clears throat> Transportation Security Administration air agents cleared luggage at Lehigh Valley International Airport. We're in, a in for a surprise Monday when they discovered an unassembled rocket-propelled grenade launcher in a passenger's bag. Authorities say the lug luggage triggered an alarm, no shit, while passing through a security checkpoint. TSA officials were shocked to find the weapon's barrel, trigger, sights, and a replica inert grenade inside. Investigators determined the weapon could be assembled didn't function. Security found the bag the bag's owner, a St. Augustine, Florida man, waiting by his gate for an Allegiant air flight to Orlando. He was detained for questioning and he told authorities he thought the replica was allowed on a flight in his checked bag. <clears throat> so I guess now that John Wick is persona non grata, he has to fly commercial, huh? That sucks. And now he's down a grenade launcher. Should have shipped that shit FedEx. That's what they say in here. Please ship these things. What the fucking... Yeah, you can't carry... No. Honey, no. No, it's cool, though. I put it in my luggage. It's no, not actually it's... on the... Pl it's not cool. Why in the world would you think... Where have you been for the past, what, almost 20 years? Yeah, like, did you just wake up from a coma? <laughs> or travel in from another dimension, maybe? It, it, where the... Are you a slider? Is that your problem? Yeah. Where I'm have you... This is John Wick. Man, you... It just sucks now. You bring anything at the fucking airport that even looks weird, and they shut that shit down. I mean, I've told the story before that I had a prank lighter. Yeah. And I, I thought my ass was going to Gitmo because they took it out and they're like, ma'am, you can't bring this on the plane. And I like every, you know how everything goes to slow-mo? Because he popped it open and he started to, and I was like, no. no. Yeah, and just... the TSA guy shocked himself and I'm like, and there's the rest of my life. Luckily, he had a sense of humor and he was like, oh, that's good. I'm going to use this on all the guys because you can't have this back. And I'm like, you know what? I just did. Where, where, where have you been? No, this is fine though, because you know it's in and my. Why are you traveling with a replica rock grenade launcher? That's another good question. What do you need that for? Why you had to go on vacation and bring the RPG? Yeah. All right, well, to be fair, he was flying to Orlando. And, I mean, we shouldn't judge because when you're traveling for LARP... No, no, even when I was... You some interesting shit in your luggage. Even traveling for LARP, whatever... Pro man, man, you remember our LARP, half our props were like cards. Yeah, they allow realistic-looking props now. There's a dude at the local game who has a crowbar made out of foam that looks like the real thing. It's a little off-putting. I would think, yeah. But, like, he hits something with it and it bounces, so, you know. <clears throat> but but just... imagine, like, that's in your luggage and they're like, you have a crowbar. No, you don't. Still, it's just... Oh, motherfucker. <clears throat> it's, a RP, it's a fucking RPG. That's one of those things. If you took this out of your luggage and you assembled it, and you're going, we're flying to New Mexico. 
it go? And even if it doesn't fucking work, nobody knows that. That's right. why you can't take it with you. Right. Because you, in the right situation, could legit hijack a plane with a replica. Yes. Because I don't know what a real grenade launcher looks like as opposed to a replica. It looks just like that. It's, that's a pretty good replica. I don't know the difference between an AR-15 and a PEN-15. Somewhere Dan just went, ooh, 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 ooh. Anyway. Hopefully somewhere Dan just got the joke. <laughs> but he's also going, I told you that. Because he tries to explain these things to me, and I'm like, yeah. We have more Florida stuff. We always have more Florida stuff. You Florida ever, is the gift that keeps on giving. Old Grady's up. Yeah, he is. He's coming for you. Hello, Grady. Oh, look oh, at him. Flop. Oh, you do. Oh, oh. Off. he's being cute. Hello, Grady. Hi, Internet. Hello, he's showing off. <laughs> um, No, but have you ever had your car impounded before? Uh, I had it towed once in the Bronx. <clears throat> yeah. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, it is. I had to walk to, like, the other end of the Bronx. Have you, ever, have you ever felt like, fuck it, I should just set this car on fire and be done with it? Oh, yes. Well. Um, that's exactly what happened. Oh. Florida man throws Molotov cocktail at own vehicle locked in impound lot. Orange County man is under arrest after allegedly throwing Molotov cocktails at his own vehicle inside of an impound lot. Car lot owner Darnell Ad Adams said he came back, started throwing gas cocktail bombs over the fence on his own car. Why? It gets worse. An arrest report says the suspect, and forgive me, I'm going to try and get through this name. Ayub. Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman. Thank you. I, ha I, I practiced this. I actually practiced that before the show. Abdul Rahman uh, came to get his car back after it was impounded and set it on fire instead. State fire marshal is now investigating. Adam said, and this is the this is the mind blowing part here. Adam said he was going to hand the keys over to Abdul Rahman because he had already paid almost three hundred to get his car out of the impound lot. But instead of it going home, the burned out car was stuck behind crime scene tape. Adam said he was bringing Abdul Rahman his keys when surveillance videos cameras caught him throwing several fire bombs, bombs at the vehicle. Um, I didn't even own it anymore. He was getting it out, Adam said. 20 minutes. If he'd waited 20 minutes, he would have been able to drive away in his car. So you already paid the money. Uh-huh. If you were going to burn your own car, why did you pay the money? Uh-huh. paid the money, why did you burn your own goddamn car? Fuck you, you don't get to keep my car. I, it's my car. I'll do what I want with my car. Yeah, here are your key. Hello? Oh, fire. Why did you... You're going to jail now, is the thing. You already paid him. Yes! And now you're going to jail. And like, I don't know about you. Mm. Most people don't just have the makings of Molotov cocktails in their pockets at any given time. I do not, no. So I feel like there was some premeditation here. Maybe, yeah, yeah, it, it seems like he was... He... Which again begs the question, why the fuck did you give him $300? I'm thinking he got really worked up going there and then he got there and the dude was just so polite. It's but not then I like walked away to get his keys and he <clears throat> thought he wasn't getting his car back or something. But then you already had Molotov cocktails on hand? What happened here? This this like, is you just carry around a backpack of Molotovs just in case cuz that concerns me. That's not. That's not normal. 
That's not a thing you should have. You know, it's not like, you know, you go out in the morning, you grab your keys, grab your phone, grab your Molotovs. One of these things is not like the others. It's not something generally people just have on hand. No. So there was some premeditation here. And yet you still gave the dude $300. <laughs> everything here. He, he fucked up everything here. He did it all wrong. Like, you paid $300 for the opportunity to set your own car on fire and go to jail. You win. Congratulations. You get everything. You could have done that shit for free. I'm, I'm more than a little baffled by this. <laughs> yeah. This is just... This is not something you expect to deal with. I'm sure as an impound uh, lot owner, this guy has dealt with all kinds of ridiculous shit. Yeah. But they never paid him first, I bet. Because your car gets impounded, you're pretty fucking mad. Like, I did my best to be polite, because I know it's not their fault. I parked in the wrong spot, and they towed me. <clears throat> and I was pissed, and it sucked, but it wasn't their fault. But not everybody is rational. This was, what were you trying to do? I, I don't, what were you trying to accomplish here? I mean, you don't get the insurance money. No. In this, in this scenario, when you're on camera burning the car yourself, even if it's still on the lot, you don't get the insurance money. <sighs> well, here's another one where it's like, what were you, the fuck were you trying to accomplish? It's from Fresno, California. Man, video shows man breaking into piano store, stealing stuff, Mickey Mouse. We got video for this, too. Yeah, we got video. Let me get my video. Where is my video? We got video. Here it is. Do, do, do. What the fuck is this? All right, so there's the, this, this piano store had this stuffed Mickey Mouse sitting on the top of the piano. And here comes Mr. Smashy. Fucking breaks the window down, takes the Mickey Mouse, and nothing else. It just leaves. Okay. Video shows the man heaving a rock to the window of the store. He then climbed in the window, took the stuffed toy, Store said a few pianos suffered minor damage. For now, the stolen Mickey has been replaced by a different stuffed Mickey. As well as a Minnie Mouse given by a customer, which is a little sweet, I guess. Except for, you know, what the hell were you doing? Why couldn't you just put the Mickey in the box? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> abstruse in the channel says fucking Disney fans. <laughs> Listen, M I C K E Y L A I Larson. Yeah, it's funny. That's funny. Yeah, it doesn't really scan. It doesn't though. really scan. An extra letter. You're trying. L A R C N E C E N Y. <clears throat> yeah, we tried. You tried. Now listen. I bet you, if you go online, or to the Ebay's or the Amazons, you could have found a stuffed Mickey toy. Yeah. For very little money. Much less money than the cost of a lawyer, a broken window, repairing the pianos. But that's like a special rare one, and it still had the tag on it, and they only sold it at the pop-up store in Peoria in 1998. I've... Oh, Will says, for a fan of Mickey Mouse, this guy is pretty goofy. <laughs> That's terrible. That's terrible. Why? Why would you? Why would you? Like, did you have a crying kid in the car and you just got desperate? <laughs> I could kind of understand me. that. I could kind of understand that. I could, But still, just... Well, in Ireland, my niece one day was just totally mm. out of sorts and super unhappy and you know just malcontent and we would have went to some gift shop and dan picked up like a pig puppet and that solved the problem 
Like he walked out with this little pink pig. And the rest of the day was easy. Okay. Right. We paid for that pink pig. Karen Issa in the channel says, M I C see the jail soon. K E Y. <laughs> Why? Because you broke in. M O U S C. Like, wow. Oh, okay. I, I'm. You're going to be amazed that this is not. I you normally save the worst story for last. You're going to be amazed. This is not our worst story this week. There's something worse than this next one. But this one's pretty bad. Hey, guess what, everybody? Get out your bingo cards. It fucking happened again. Man accidentally shoots himself in penis. Yeah. Marion, Indiana. A man accidentally shot himself in the penis early Thursday. Police in Marion, Indiana say Mark Anthony Jones, 46, was carrying a 9mm handgun in his waistband when it began to slip. He reached down to adjust the gun, and it fired! The bullet entered just above his penis and exited his scrotum. You got a cool piercing now. <laughs> And of course, police say that Jones does not have an Indiana handgun license. Like, I'm not an expert on guns, as I think we all know. But I know a few things. One, you carry it in a proper fucking holster. Right. You are not in bad boys. Like, you put it in a proper receptacle. And I don't know why anybody would point it at... The Jen? greatest concentration of nerve endings on your body? Of all, you have a device that is intentionally made to put holes in flesh. That's the whole point of it. That's why it was invented. And of all the things you could point it at, you direct it straight at your genitals. And then I also know that guns come with a thing called a safety. Mm. Safety. Yeah, safety catch, yes. And that it won't fire if that's on. Which is part so of if why... if you're going to point your gun at your dick, you should probably use that thingy that makes it not fire at your dick. That's that's kind of why you have handgun training. You know, so you know not to... Why? Of all the... Pla and you know what? Even if you're in a situation where, holy shit, I need my gun, this is not the best place to, to be like... No. That's not your quick draw. That's not going to get it out, out and available to you to defend yourself. You're going to be fumbling with the fucking gun. <sighs> this is just bad. This is just Darwinism at work. Of all the places to point a gun, be like, where does this go? Oh, right there. That's the perfect That's spot. The thing. Like any dude that wants to store your gun pointing at your tackle by all means because if you blow off your left nut that's just lowering the chances that you're gonna have dumbass kids <laughs> and teach them dumbass shit like pointing your gun at your genitals uh, but you know try to have a gun license if you're gonna shoot your own dick off in public god yeah that's the other thing because you weren't supposed to have it obviously Someone else could have gotten hurt, too. Yeah. <sighs> the news is, you got a sweet piercing now. So what and could... It's already, it's already gauged. Yeah, that's pretty... That's 9 millimeter. Yeah, that's a pretty big gauge, though. Um, so uh, what could possibly be worse? What What could we come up with that's worse than yet another shot through the dick and you're to blame? <laughs> Well, here's one, and yeah, you're gonna be. Mad. I was mad when I read this. Everybody, get ready, y'all gonna be mad. We're all mad now. Plane forced to turn around after mother realizes she left her baby at the airport. No. <clears throat> A passenger jet was forced to return to the airport soon after takeoff this weekend. When a passenger realized she had left her baby at the terminal. 
How? Saudi a plane had been due to fly from Jeddah in Saudi Arabia, but had to tur return to the King Abdulaziz International Airport when the forgetful mother demanded she be reunited with her child. Video footage captured the baffled air control operators speaking by radio with the pilots who were doing their best to explain the bizarre situation. Um... So yeah, n according to Gulf News, readers took to social media to post responses to the mix-up. While some praised the pilots for their understanding, others said the carelessness of the mother was concerning. Yeah. No duh. No further information on the mother of the child was released. It appears the two were reunited once the plane returned to the Red Sea port city. How? When you're a parent... Kids are fucking slick, man. Like they are. I used to routinely fall asleep under the big round racks at a department store, and my mom would be like searching for me frantically. Shit does happen, but like, I feel like if you're leaving the country, there's a lot of things to check. I know when you go around with a baby, you've got a lot of shit. You got the stroller. You got the bag, you got the diapers, you got the food, you got the formula, you got all... But the baby's kind of central to, you know... Kind of important. Yeah, it's like the main... Everything else is a peripheral. The main station is the baby. Everything like, plugs into the baby. Like, I'm not going to dunk on this mom, because... It has happened before. Like, we, you see stories like this, and it's fucking terrible. And that must have been terrifying. But how do you get onto the plane with all the stuff? I mean, they let you on the plane first if you got a baby. Yeah. How do you get on the plane and be well, like... They do that here. I don't know if they do that in Saudi Arabia. Well, still, you get on the... How do you get on the plane and be like, I'm forgetting Like, where something. was the baby I, that you were able to forget her? I'm forgetting something. Um, Did I pack my Kindle? Yeah. Um... Got my traveler's checks. What am I forgetting? Oh, right. The fucking baby. That's so scary. I know. Like, imagine being the airport worker that finds the unattended baby. Did someone lose a baby? There's just a baby here. Is, that, is this whose baby is this? Look, we're going to put oh, it... I actually bet they have training for that. Look, we're going to put this in Lost and Found. If nobody claims it by the end of the day, it goes to the staff, all right? Anybody want a baby? And it's not like they could call anybody because her phone's off because she's on a fucking airplane. Uh -huh. Oh, my God. <laughs> this is like the worst Home Alone reboot. This yeah. totally... <laughs> I mean, good on that pilot for taking that shit serious and turning the plane around. Yeah. I don't know that an American pilot would do that. I'm just, I, 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 now I'm actually kind of imagining that baby going around the, the airport, setting up traps and foiling a heist or some shit. <laughs> oh, that's so scary. Yeah, that's that. Jesus Christ. How do you forget the baby? <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, Zodiac. Have you at any time left your baby unattended at the airport? Sorry, we have to give that to the Bob Squad. And that's the thing. Like, I was thinking that, like, I knew that foolish <laughs> and terrible, but people use children for suicide bombing. Oh, but yeah, just. So, like, if you're an airport employee, you have to think about that. Have you had this baby on your person at all times? It's horrible. Like, if you just see an unattended baby in a carrier or something, you don't know what's under that baby. And you have to think about that. I know. Poor, the, the poor fucking... The kid's gonna be fine. Maybe. But... I mean, hopefully the kid's young enough that they will never remember. <laughs> oh, somebody's gonna tell them. They're gonna... No, no, no. What's gonna happen is they're gonna be at a family meeting and someone's gonna get pissed at their mom. They're gonna be, oh, yeah? Hey, guess what your mom did when you I mean, were... We, we never let my sister or my mom forget the time she took off while my sister was only half in the car. 
and like left my the door was still open i was like four i think we were picking my sisters up from school to go to the doctor and my sister did not fully get in the back seat and my mom took off not realizing she wasn't fully in the car obviously and my sister is like holding on to the open door with one hand and the car with the other and it rained that day so her ass is going through every puddle and she's screaming. Luckily, my mom didn't make it out of the school parking lot before realizing, but it was pretty exciting. Computer Ronan in the channel says, it's 30,000 feet in the air. Do you know where your child is? But that's what I mean when I say, like, oh. shit happens, man. Like, you can't... Parents just fuck up sometimes. They can't help it. Like, it's hard. Yeah, look at me. My parents fucked up hard. Like, keeping tiny humans alive? That's not easy. That's why I stick with cats. <clears throat> So yeah, the first thing we learned this week is double check the fucking carry. carry. Do a head count. <laughs> Do a head count. Yes. Do a head count before you get on the plane. Make sure you have everybody. Um, we've learned if you don't know how to operate the safety on your handgun, maybe you shouldn't have the handgun. If you're not legally allowed to own a handgun, you maybe really you shouldn't should. have a handgun. And in general, maybe you shouldn't store your handgun pointing at your genitals. Why would you? Of all, I'm just. It makes holes in flesh, and you're pointing it at like well, the guys that put it down the back of their pants. I'm like, all right, you got a handy channel for that <laughs> bullet to travel down. That's better. <laughs> I was shot in the butt docks. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're lucky, it'll just go straight down the crack, and you'll be a okay. We've learned that a stuffed Mickey Mouse is cheaper than a jail time. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what the going rate on Mickey Mouse toys is, but I'm pretty sure it's it's cheaper than bail. Yeah. Um, We've learned that if they're giving you the car... Well, okay, we've learned that uh, it, most people don't carry Molotovs around with them. That's not a normal thing to do. If you're carrying Molotovs around with you, you may have a problem. You should talk to somebody. You should talk to many... A professional somebody. Yes. And you should leave them at home. Also, things to leave at home. Your fucking replica rocket-propelled grenade launcher. Yeah. It does not go on the plane with you. It does... It's... It's not a... That's... That's... Why on... God, mm, no, it'll be fine. You Where have you been? Water past security. Yeah. What? fuck made you think your toy grenade launcher could come? They, they took my fucking fingernail. Remember the time I was flying to England and I had a screwdriver and they're like, you can't have this. I'm like, what, you think I'm going to take the plane apart? <laughs> you can stab someone with a screwdriver, though. Uh, it's, uh, the, I, when I say screwdriver, I mean screwdriver. Yeah, but you can stab somebody with that. The, you put that in somebody's eye? <laughs> Oh, yeah, I'm a limber fucking eye-stabbing ninja, me. I'm just saying. <laughs> and finally, we've learned that if you're trying to get rid of ghosts, your go-to should be salt, not diesel. Also, clear <clears throat> the house before you burn it down. Yeah, because you already have the one ghost. You want more ghosts? That's more ghosts. You're trying to get rid of a ghost. Don't make more ghosts. Come on now. That's just rude. I just, I'm... This is the best plan I've ever come up with. I'm gonna burn down the ghosts. <laughs>